Hello again, and you've reached part 19 of our series of studies on the 66 books of the Bible. You've arrived today at the book of Psalms, book of praise. Psalms stand alone as an embodiment of the whole scriptures. They are in many people's mind the greatest book of religious devotion that has ever been given to humankind. The title comes from the Septuagint. The Greek word psalms just means psalms sung to the accompaniment of a stringed instrument. The psalms were written by various authors. David has 73 psalms assigned to him within the text of those psalms. The New Testament assigns two others, Psalm 2 and 95. We are told they are his in Acts 4 and Hebrews chapter 4. Asaph is declared to have written 12. He was a Levite who headed the service of music, and we were told that in Ezra and Chronicles. The sons of Korah are credited with a further 10, and Solomon is seen to have contributed two, Heman, one, Ethan 1, and even Moses is declared to have authored 1, and that's Psalm 90. That leaves 48 Psalms still anonymous. The rabbis called those without a known author the Orphan Psalms. The Psalms were written over an extended time span. About half of the Psalms in total were written by David, around 1000 BC. Psalm 137 was written during the Babylonian captivity, about 580 BC. The Psalms are written to different groups of people under different conditions. However, one shouldn't forget that the Psalms themselves declare that they were written to the Lord, but also draws attention to the fact that they're written for the people of Israel and for God's people everywhere. In fact, Psalm 150 says they were written to be a blessing to all of mankind. The subject of the Psalms generally is praise. The Hebrew Bible, in fact, entitles the book of Psalm as the Psalms of Praises. The message of Psalms is to provide godly people everywhere with opportunities to praise God and to be encouraged to find hope in his future blessing. From a New Testament perspective, Jesus was the embodiment of the ideals that God desired for his people. Because of the union between God and his people, the suffering of the godly in the Old Testament times are seen as the anticipation of the sufferings of Christ. Likewise, when the victories of godly people in the Old Testament are portrayed, they are seen as an anticipation of the victory of Christ. When the New Testament writers spoke of the fulfillment of the Old Testament in Jesus Christ, that fulfillment was not just the occurrence of events that someone had predicted, Rather, it was to be seen as a completion of a pattern that God had been silently directing through the various periods of history of his people Israel. We are able then to see and expect the foreshadowing of Christ in the Psalms. The godly psalmist wrote of the ideals that he desired for himself and for others, but the only true full expression of those ideals was in the perfect person of Jesus Christ. In reading the Psalms, we should bear in mind that this book is a book of poetry, specifically Hebrew poetry. The distinctive style of Hebrew poetry comes not from metre or rhyme, as in a traditional English poem, but from the balanced arrangement of words and sentences. This means that when Hebrew poetry is translated into other languages, it still retains some of its style and rhythm. Over the years, people have classified the psalms based on content, for example, or for the fact that some are historical psalms and then others are recognized as being messianic psalms. A second method of classification is by function. It investigates the genre of the psalm and traces that to its origin to determine its setting in life. All these methods of classifications have made their contribution to our understanding of the Psalms, but neither system alone is definitive or entirely satisfactory. One shouldn't forget the two purposes of the Psalms. One is to inspire worship. The Book of Psalms is an inspired song or worship book of prayer and praise. 
In the midst of doubts and fears, longings, hopes, joys and sorrows, believers are still seen and given opportunities to praise God. Another purpose of the Psalms was to provide prophecy. According to the New Testament, at least 13 Psalms are messianic. Over one-fourth of the Old Testament quotations contained in the New Testament come from the Psalms. The promise made in these Psalms is that although at times things may be uncertain, the Lord will establish his kingdom through the future Messiah. That reassurance might not stabilize the difficult time the individual may be going through, but it can certainly calm an anxious heart. No matter what part of the Bible we read, we shall understand it better when we understand the events that prompt its writing. This applies to the Psalms as it does to other parts of the Bible. Each Psalm had a meaning to the author when he wrote it. As we today understand this meaning, the Holy Spirit who inspired the writer is able to speak to us and apply that ancient word to our present circumstances. This helps us to understand God better and to know how we ought to live if we want to live in a way which pleases Him. So in summary, at least seven different authors over a period of nearly 1,000 years composed songs of praise and worship whose purpose was to worship God and express Israel's future hope. God is to be trusted with our troubles and is worthy of our praise and that future hope will be fulfilled in Christ Jesus himself.